Okay, no audio for Anu. Okay, so we have this beautiful collection of uh, Taylor Swift, right? You can go through them, you can listen, you'll just literally enjoy. Especially Shake It Off, I mean YouTube, we have over 180 billion, 180? Not 180 billion, I think. 200 billion views, second or third highest. Okay. Hi Ramesh. Hi. Hi everyone. So Lokanath, I am dedicating this song to you, right? Yeah. Yes, we are all back again. Patanahi. So what is that Patanahi? It means you don't know. Dubara say close Kreke on Crow Anu. <laughs> what is this? Okay. Dubara say close Karke on Karo. It's like we're killing, we're slaughtering the literature. Okay, right. So we'll proceed with today's uh, textbook discussion on the topic pharyngeal arches, right? So I have, I hope you have a hard copy or at least a soft copy of the text. And also make sure that you have, you have a short note so that you can at least make a note of key points wherever necessary and appropriate. And also if marker, that would be of great help. Hi, hi again, hi Regino, hi Lavanya. Right. So first we'll go through some of the introductory parts. So we'll be discussing the chapter Essentials of Oral Histology and Embryology by Avery, James Avery, right? Yeah. So pharyngeal arches. So as we discussed the overview, we'll just go through what's given in the text here, right? So in the overview part, if you observe, it's mentioned like pharyngeal arch, we have man ma mandibular arches and each arch contains blood vessels, muscles, nerves and skeletal elements right so that's we're all familiar with so we'll just go through the development of pharyngeal arches directly right so here we have a clinical comment so it's given that from the initial development each pharyngeal arch has a specific cranial nerve associated with it so as we discussed the first arch fifth cranial nerve the second arch seventh cranial nerve third arch ninth and fourth and sixth arches tenth cranial nerves right so from the beginning from the initial development itself each pharyngeal arch has a specific cranial nerve associated with it and the nerves and the musculature of each arch emerge together and follow defined pathways to their functional positions and these events are closely regulated genetically during development and few occur few errors can even occur during this entire process right so we'll just proceed with the introduction part of the development of pharyngeal arches page 39 so it's given that you have a lot many illustrations excellent illustrations for us to clearly understand the development of embryo right face head and neck especially so pharyngeal arches are so termed because they bend around the sides of pharynx as bars of tissue each arch is separated by vertical grooves on the lateral sides of the neck at the fifth week and within the pharynx the grooves called pharyngeal pouches separate each arch and these pouches match the pharyngeal clefts on the external aspects of the neck right so that's what we try to discuss there so we have lateral grooves vertical grooves which are present on the lateral aspect of neck and then the same grooves extending onto the pharynx are called as pouches and corresponding to the pouches on ventral side on the dorsal side we have these clefts or gills right so clefts is a more appropriate term now let's move on to i mean in page 40 they are given all the cranial nerves the functions and also how to test them so that's also very very important you can just go through that table so it's given here all cranial nerves including their functions and various tests right you know i mean nerves a nerve test in order to uh, evaluate the functionality of a given nerve so if you observe in page 41 it's mentioned that the five arches with their clefts resemble the embryonic gill slits of fish and amphibians this is one of the many similarities between human embryos and other embryos during early development and the first arch is termed the mandibular arch because it will later form the bony mandible and the associated muscles of mastication, nerves as well as blood supply. And the second or hyoid arch forms the facial muscles, vessels and hyoid bone. The third, fourth and fifth arch consists of paid right and left bars that are divided before they reach the midline by presence of a bulging heart. The arches become progressively smaller anteroposteriorly 
and the outer surface this is important right so the outer surface of each arch is covered with ectoderm and the inner surface see including the inner surface it's given clearly that the outer surface of each arch as we have seen in the picture is covered with ectoderm as are the inner surface of the first arch and the covering of anterior surface of the second so that's the same thing which i try to represent there so ectoderm extends onto the ventral aspect of the first arch as well as the anterior aspect of the second arch ventrally so the outer surface of each arch is covered with ectoderm as are the inner surface of the first arch and the covering of anterior surface of the second so this ectoderm is the epithelial lining of the oral cavity the pharyngeal surface of remaining four arches is however lined by endoderm and which is the same as the lining of gastrointestinal tract and the cores of arches so as we have seen in one of the illustrations in the core of arch we have this nerve component muscular component cartilaginous component and vessel component right so these will further differentiate and are important in development of adult human face right so now let's go through pharyngeal grooves and pharyngeal pouches okay we'll proceed then yeah now coming to pharyngeal grooves and pharyngeal pouches the first pharyngeal groove deepens to become the external auditory canal leading to the middle ear okay so the first pharyngeal groove deepens to become the external auditory canal leading to middle ear and the membrane at the depth of this tube becomes a tympanic membrane so even the tympanic membrane forms from this first pharyngeal groove the middle ear and eustachian tube develop from the corresponding first pharyngeal pouch so you asked like which structures develop from the first pouch so middle ear and eustachian tube right so from the first groove you have this external auditory meatus and tympanic membrane and middle ear and eustachian tube develop from the first pharyngeal pouch i haven't mentioned that there you can just make a note of it also first pharyngeal pouch giving rise to middle ear and eustachian tube so after the fifth week no other pharyngeal grooves are seen externally as the tissues of second and fifth arch grow okay this is all given in the diagram also not so important mm, right so now let's go through the derivatives of other pharyngeal pouches if you can see in the next paragraph the endodermal lining of pharyngeal pouches differentiates into several important organs the second pharyngeal pouch becomes the palatine tonsil so first pouch we have derivatives like middle ear and eustachian tube the second we have this palatine tonsils the third inferior parathyroid and thymus the fourth superior parathyroid and the fifth becomes ultimo branchial body right so same thing which we have discussed previously okay now the palatine tonsils okay the functions and all we are all familiar with right the palatine tonsils uh, development of lymphocytes immunity parathyroid glands regulate calcium uh, balance throughout the body yeah and thymus we have seen maturation of t cells in one of the multiple choice questions if you remember and ultimo bronchial body forms para follicular cells in the thyroid gland and then uh, helps in production of calcitonin right so we're all familiar with this now after going through the introductory part of pharyngeal arch and pharyngeal pouch now let's go go through the vascular development so vascular development which we discussed at the last so we'll be discussing that now first so each of the first so you, you can just observe the diagram 3 4 right so figure 3 4 where they shown the basic structure of the vasculature like how it's being progressing yeah you can see that in figure 3 4 they are mentioned about aortic arch vessel right so each of the five pharyngeal arches contain a right and a left aortic arch vessel that leads from the heart through the arches to the face brain and posterior regions of the body so we have a right aortic arch and a left aortic arch for each pharyngeal arch okay yeah so we'll, we'll skip off all this yeah you can see that in the next paragraph it's mentioned that the third arch vessels become the common carotid arteries so that's the reason why while discussing the third arch we mentioned that common carotid and the first part of internal carotid do supply the structures from these uh, derivatives right so all the derivatives from the third arch is supplied by this particular artery so the third arch vessels become common carotid artery which supply the neck face and brain especially the internal carotid the fourth arch vessels become the dorsal aorta which supplies the blood 
to the remainder of the body and vessels of the sixth arch supply the lungs with pulmonary circulation right so third arch we have common carotid artery and internal carotid artery right and the fourth arch dorsal aorta and subclavian if you remember and the sixth arch it's pulmonary artery right as we have discussed previously right the same thing an important feature of common carotid arteries is supply of blood to the face neck and brain from the internal carotid artery however after seven weeks the circulation of the face and neck shifts from the internal to the external and the internal carotid continues to supply to the growing brain right so that particular point you can just make a note after seven weeks the circulation of face and neck shifts from the internal to the external carotid artery initially it's internal carotid which supplies all these structures but later we have more differentiation so that's pertaining to vascular development very brief and then you have muscular and neural development so the same thing we'll just see whether we can get any additional points here so muscle cells in the first arch become apparent during the fifth week and begin to spread within the mandibular arch so we have this by 10th week the muscles of second arch have formed a thin sheet okay mm, the muscle masses okay masseter medial and lateral pterygoid and temporalis muscles that is muscles of mastication they are all related to the developing mandible and as we have seen in the osteology of mandible yesterday we have seen this a uh, mesteric tuberosity and we have the pterygoid tuberosity right on the angle of mandible <coughs> externally and internally so mesenter and medial pterygoid form a vertical sling that inserts into the angle of mandible temporalis spreads into infratemporal fossa that inserts into the developing coronoid process and the temporal crest as we have seen the anterior border of the coronoid notch and lateral pterygoid it inserts into the neck of the condyle pterygoid fovea right and the pharyngeal constrictor muscles in the fourth arch are differentiated in the neck and function to enclose pharynx so fourth arch we have pharyngeal muscles right yeah so nerves develop in conjunction with the developing muscle fibers by the end of seventh week okay we have this fifth first arch seventh for second arch ninth for third arch tenth for this uh, fourth and sixth arch right so the same stuff again okay. yeah so we have the nerve supply of tongue also mentioned here we'll just discuss that because tongue is a very good example of muscle cell migration just observe page 44 i'll just come from the top of the pair the 10th nerve innervates muscles of fourth arch which are inferior constrictors and laryngeal muscles the tongue which is primarily a muscle relates the branches of the ninth nerve which carries the sensory modality of taste from the taste buds located in the posterior one third of tongue and to the seventh nerve which carries the modality of taste from the anterior two thirds so taste sensation is being carried by glossopharyngeal nerve from the posterior third of tongue and from the anterior two thirds the taste sensation is being carried by the cauda tympani of facial nerve whereas the general sensations from the posterior third of tongue are also supplied by glossopharyngeal we have the classification of i think you're all familiar with it so the fifth nerve is sensory to the same area that's fine the tongue is a good example of muscle cell migration because it originates in the occipital myotome and migrates anteriorly in the floor of the mouth and during migration the nerve mentioned enter the muscle mass and later carry out their important functions right so that's the reason because of this migration and because of the incorporation of these nerve fibers we have different innervations to the tongue so that's pertaining to the muscular component and neural component in brief right and then we'll proceed with cartilaginous skeletal development so the initial skeleton so we have we have seen several derivatives from this pharyngeal arches right so each arch we have a unique cartilage i mean we have a specific name for cartilages like for example first arch we call that as meckel's cartilage second arch we call it as richard's cartilage right right we'll just proceed then so cartilaginous skeletal development right because if i stop for another one more minute ashin is going to get angry right so cartilaginous skeletal development we have seen that first arch meckel's cartilage so which appears bilaterally and the structures which are derived include malleus incus and from the second arch we have stapes being developed right so all this is fine so mandible in fact develops from the same and we have 
a rod shaped cartilage of the second or hyoid arch which is known as richards cartilage steps or stapes styloid process lesser horn and upper body of hyoid arise from this arch and the third arch forms a greater horn and lower part of hyoid body the fourth arch contributes to the hyoid cartilage which then supports the gland the fifth has no adult cartilage derivatives which is very important and the sixth arch cartilage forms the laryngeal cartilage right so you have this beautiful illustration cartilage derivatives you just go through this image it will be crystal clear for you to understand the concept also right okay we'll just do one thing we'll wait for 2 minutes just retry your apps or close your windows and try starting it again we'll just take another 10 more minutes that's it right we can just complete off and maybe if we if we can share i mean or if we can discuss some multiple choice questions we'll just do a four or five multiple choice questions we'll just proceed and conclude with uh, five at least a minimum of five mcqs right <laughs> So Saida has been waiting for a chance to give you back bonus. So now she is mocking at you, saying that you are also a part of their common uh, network sharing platform. I think you're all Airtel users. You're using this family plan or something. <laughs> so Ashina is like, so this is a chance for me to have this unimpeded uh, live session. So let me just go through it completely. So she is not accepting music. She is not accepting any breaks, and she wants me, if possible, uh, she will say like, I have to continue talking like this or continue having these live sessions or virtual classrooms 24 hours. Okay, it's already at low pixel. Yeah, Geo is of course. awesome i have been i have been enjoying geo in fact when i don't have wifi right now i have wifi when i don't have wifi not wifi wifi so it's a geo which really literally serves me yeah geo is the boss right yeah airtel is also fine but uh, we have some issues here in this place with airtel so we we just love airtel mijawad and other places it's quite good we have this 4g connectivity by the way this is not the right platform to promote any cellular networks right so all networks are good sbsnl is good airtel is good vodafone is good jio is good telenor is good anything else uh, reliance okay reliance jio so anything is there yeah every network is good Okay, Farheen, you want me to read the ligament name? Spino mandibular, spino malleolar, and stylo hyoid. Spino malleolar, and that's what I said while discussing the ligaments, Farheen. If you remember, the first arch we discussed is spino mandibular, an anterior ligament of malleus, right? So that's called as spino malleolar, I guess. So both are derived from first arch, and the ligament derived from the second arch is stylo hyoid ligament, right? Yeah, idea. Right. So all networks are very good. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot idea, because an idea can change your life. Of course, we have to be we have to be diplomatic when you are on a uh, public platform, right? I just can't say that, uh, or I just can't promote one brand. Okay. Right. We'll just have the summary, entire summary of what's given here, and then we'll proceed with MCQ's discussion. Right. Yeah. Yes, Prithvi. I'll continue. Right. So, as we have been discussing pharyngeal arches, it's very important we have. See, once you can master this embryology topic, especially the development of face, even face development is very important. So, once you can master these pharyngeal arches and the structures derived from these arches, then it will be easy for you to correlate there. I mean, when you go through the muscles, all muscles supplied by except. all structures supplied by the following like all the structures being supplied by a particular vessel right so all these answers can be answered with confidence when you go through and when you master this particular topic right so pharyngeal arches 
So each pharyngeal arch, we have an outer ectoderm and an inner endoderm. Ectoderm extends into the inner aspect in case of first arch and the anterior aspect of the second arch. And each arch contains a blood vessel, muscle, nerve and skeletal elements which we have discussed in detail. And the first arch cartilage is called as Meckel's. The second is a rod shaped cartilage which is called as Richard's cartilage. Right? And we have these lateral grooves dividing the pharyngeal arches which are present on the lateral aspect of the neck and then you have on the ventral side so the same grooves are called as pharyngeal pouches and the corresponding structures to pouches on the dorsal side are called as clefts right so we have various structures deriving from these lateral grooves as well as pharyngeal pouches as we have discussed right so first groove we have this external auditory meatus and tympanic membrane and the first pouch structures derived include middle ear and eustachian tube. So I said that eustachian tube is developed from the first groove, right? I'm sorry, I think I mentioned that wrong in the previous session. So first groove, external auditory canal and tympanic membrane, whereas first pouch, middle ear and eustachian tube. Second pouch, palatine tonsil. Third, we have this inferior parathyroids and thymus. Fourth, superior parathyroid. Uh, parathyroid glands and fifth we have ultimobronchial body right so these are the main structures so vascular development it's mentioned that i haven't mentioned that previously so we have two aortic arch vessels the left and the right aortic arch vessels right so from these we have all these vasculatures being vascular structures being developed right so third arch we have common cares first and second mostly they're all embryonic structures we discussed about first aortic arch and stapedial artery corresponding to the first and second they're mostly uh, embryonic structures they just vanish after uh, the period of growth but third arch we have common carotid artery internal carotid artery which we have seen before seventh week internal carotid artery supplies the structures of face scalp and brain and after seventh week there is transition and internal carotid confines to supplying brain that is face and scalp being supplied by external carotid artery and we have seen the branches of external carotid artery in one of the mcqs yesterday i i, I as far as i remember right and fourth arch we have structures being supplied by subclavian and arch of iota and sixth arch we have structures being supplied by pulmonary circulation pulmonary arteries right and muscular and neural development we have gone through that in detail so muscles broadly the first arch muscles of mastication second arch we have these facial muscles third arch we have gloss of uh, we have the style of pharynges I'm getting this close of pharynges now always. Stylopharynges muscle or third and fourth we have these muscles of pharynx right sixth also and nerves so first arch trigeminal mandibular division second facial nerve third glossopharyngeal that is a ninth nerve ninth cranial nerve fourth and sixth vagus fourth vagus superior laryngeal branch sixth vagus again a branch that is external uh, sorry recurrent laryngeal nerve right recurrent laryngeal nerve from the sixth arch And as they mentioned here, tongue is a good example for muscle cell migration. So go through the nerve supply of tongue. That's very, very important. We also made one video on YouTube last year, right? You can just go through that in the playlist in order. In cartilaginous skeletal components, we have discussed about various structures like malle mandible, malleus, incus. We have the spinoid process, spinospinoid and spinomandibular ligaments derived from the first arch. Second arch, we have stapes, styloid process, stylohyoid ligament and lesser horn and upper part of the body of hyoid third fourth and sixth we have already discussed right fourth thyroid cartilage sixth arytenoid cartilage right so this is in brief all so it's like almost we had two revisions right we'll just proceed with some of the mcqs i guess yeah so we'll have our first question we'll just have five mcqs and then we'll conclude first all of the following structures are derivatives of first arch except <clears throat> yeah We'll start with the simple question. All of the following structures, simple now because we have gone through that uh, n number of times. 
all of the following structures are derivatives of first arch except so we have options malleus spinomandibular ligament sp spinomalleolar ligament and stapes steps hi shruti i think we are hearing from you for the first time So Farheen, you asked one question regarding the fifth arch. When does it disappear? It's mentioned that fifth pharyngeal arch is often rudimentary and soon disappears. So I'm not exactly sure of the timing. If we'll just see if I can find out, right? It's mentioned soon. Anyways, I'll just try to find out. Okay. Yes, Rishi. So Rishi, I think you're attending our live session for the first time. Yeah, yes, Ashina, Pritika, Prithvi, Mega, Alvin, Shruti, Fauzia, Anu, Neetu, Bernis, Farheen, Ramesh, Lokanath, Pooja, Rishin. Yes, okay. Welcome to our live sessions, Rishi. Right. So it is option D. Step is step is. So we have the step is being developed from Richard's cartilage, right? Okay. We'll have our second question then. Inferior parathyroid glands developed from which pharyngeal arch? Which skeletal component of pharyngeal arch? First, second, third, and fourth. The same question when asked a week later, we might find it challenging, right? So try to make a note of it. And also, I've shared the picture in in our WhatsApp update group. Just store it, or it's better if you can record it by yourself, right? In your customized notes. Yeah. By the way, it is option C, third, right? Fourth arch gives rise to superior. So third arch gives rise to inferior parathyroid as well as thymus. Fourth gives rise to superior parathyroid glands. Good. Okay, we'll proceed with the next one. So this is more or less a memory-based uh, one because we do have questions on similar pattern in various exams also. They'll be asking like which week. Of development, you find certain structures. So, third question: Muscle cells in the first arch become apparent during uh, which week of embryonic stage? Third week, fifth week, seventh week, tenth week. So, it's more or less a memory-based one. So, we need to memorize. We need to by heart certain points, right? So try answering this. We'll just go with the next question. Yeah, it is fifth week, right? Good. So we'll just move on to the next one. I'm just looking at my board for so that I'll get some additional options. Right. So fourth question: the skeletal components derived from the fifth arch include thyroid cartilage, arytenoid cartilage, greater horn of hyoid. Cuneiform cartilage. So the skeletal components derived from fifth arch include thyroid cartilage, retinoid, greater horn of hyoid, cuneiform cartilage. Alvin, you say AD. So you're going for two options. I should hide my expressions. So what is the answer now? So fifth gets merged with fourth. Okay, okay, let me answer this. 
okay it's none of the above so we have no adult skeletal components being derived from the fifth arch fifth arch disappears as few of you rightly pointed out so no cartilage derivatives right so i just wanted to make it difficult for you to answer so i have trapped you by giving four options so it is none of them yeah so the fifth arch has no adult cartilage derivatives so thyroid and all if you look at the options so option a thyroid cartilage developed from the fourth arch erythroid from the sixth greater horn of hyoid from the second cuneiform again from the third right i'm sorry i mean i'm sorry i'm fourth so thyroid corniculate and cuneiform from fourth erythroid from sixth okay you can score me for giving me that kind of question but but we need to have this kind of questions also right yes regina none so prithvi i think so all of you gave all of you are giving answers and few of you gave alvin gave two options rishi you say option a bernie also went for two options anu was in doubt from the beginning but prithvi okay realize that nothing developed from fifth arch yeah neetu sharma also so shruti has some logical point so fifth arch gets merged in fourth arch so i think it's right it's a logical option good well tried so well tried everyone okay right so we'll proceed with the next question now you'll be in a doubt whether i'll be giving you a normal one or a kind of crazy one again we'll have one final question what is it prithvi what does it mean i think you have increased vasculature over your entire face so blushing so what is the peculiarity of face we have this blushing yeah we'll have one final uh, question smirk i didn't understand what does it mean smirk yeah we'll have our fifth question so we have two statements here statement 1 okay we have two statements statement 1 aortic arch vessels which course through each pharyngeal arch from the heart below the brain above are important to craniofacial development statement 1 and statement 2 each arch contains blood vessels muscles and nerves only so statement 1 is true two is false one is false two is true both are true and both are false and finally we will have one match the following question right the sixth one So Bernie says the first is false and second is true. Ashina, the reverse A is true, B is false. Farhin A is false, B is true. Prithvi the same. Prithika, Neetu, Alvin, Rohit, Mega, Rohan Gupta. Hi Rohan. Shruti also one false and two true. Okay. Anu, you say one true and two false. Right. Ramesh also the same. Both can also be true. Smirk means smile. Okay. Smirk means is it a Hindi term? smirk or smark how do you pronounce that okay okay we'll just leave it <laughs> we kid smile so you are the one who say that i said paper very easily and i should be in the paper setting board and whenever i give you a kind of challenging question again you criticize me 
So what does it mean? Right. You know the story of a father, son, and a donkey. I mean, when these three, when these three people, like father, son, and donkey, are walking into the village, uh, like people will look at them and say, "See that father is making his son walk alongside his donkey. How nonsense it is!" So, like people are thinking that way. So the father feels bad, and then he makes the child sit on the donkey. So again, people start saying that. Uh, he is somehow troubling the donkey oh, why can't his son walk like we have this ancient fable i'm not exactly getting it so it's like whatever you do you have this kind of healthy criticism i take it as a healthy criticism okay we have one beautiful quote from prithvi so i'm going to uh, take a screenshot of it and i'm going to store it I'm just kidding, by the way. Okay, don't take it seriously. Okay, video is delayed. You can just uh, close it and uh, try opening it again. Okay, okay, fine. So, by the way, the first statement, aortic arch vessels, we have left and right. So, which course through each pharyngeal arch from the heart below the brain above are important to craniofacial development. So first statement is true. There is second statement. Each arch contains blood vessels, mu muscles, and nerves. Also, we have the skeletal component, right? So, first statement is true. Second is false. Okay. So type the answer also. Okay, Prithvi, I got your intention, right? Each arch contains blood vessel, muscles, and nerves only. Yes, we have only there. Yes, these three are also passing, but you don't have only these three, right? You have four components. See, if I say each arch contains blood vessels, muscles, and nerves, then that statement would have been true. But it's mentioned each arch contains blood vessels, muscles, and nerves only. Only. It's not only, right? We even have the skeletal component, the cartilaginous component, which is even more important, right? So, along with these other structures. So, logic says that it has to be false if only is given. Yeah, cartilage, skeletal, uh, skeletal component. So, that's the reason why statement 2 is false. Okay? Yeah, first is true, second is false. Yeah, right. So, Bernice, again, we have another important, like previous session, you taught us one important, uh, one important aspect that is importance of maintaining notes. But again, now you taught us another important lesson that is reading the question carefully, which we should be doing repeatedly, right? So, we should read the entire question not once but twice, right? Okay, good. So, Bernice wants to be first, <coughs> right? So we'll just have this match matching and then we'll conclude finally yeah match the following we have a b c d on one column and one two three four on the other so try matching them and give me the right match so a palatin tonsil b greater corno of hyoid c thymus d incus and one third pharyngeal arch two second pharyngeal pouch Three first pharyngeal arch, four fourth pharyngeal arch. So try matching them. We'll just stop with that. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. So just replace that third pharyngeal arch with third pouch then. Okay, okay, fine. Fine, I got it. So you'll all be getting one mark extra, right? Mark extra. Yeah, just go through it. Palatin tonsil derives from the second pharyngeal pouch, greater cornu of hyoid. So we have this greater cornu of hyoid developing from the third pharyngeal arch, right? Yeah, greater cornu and lower part of hyoid. Lower part of the body of hyoid. 
and then thymus develops from third pharyngeal pouch i'm sorry and incus develops from the first arch right i just wanted to make questions more tough but i didn't really want to complicate this but somehow without my knowledge i have complicated the final question no tonsil from second pouch second pharyngeal pouch tonsil and from third pharyngeal pouch you have inferior parathyroid and thymus fourth you have superior parathyroid so thymus from third pharyngeal pouch they not from arches by the way okay don't get confused arches are the structures Uh, elevated structures pouches are nothing but the depressions between as you can see in the illustration in the previous session right yeah so you'll all be given an extra mark okay don't worry if the question is wrong right so we'll stop it here then so i think we have gone through extensively the pharyngeal pouches and all we still have a lot many topics to cover so definitely we'll do our best we'll try to cover as many topics as possible in the coming days and weeks right so by the way we are seeing this new group of yours so i wish you all the best and also have joined in that group so that even i will have some kind of motivation every day to wake up at 4:30 or 5 am right yeah it's my pleasure it's always my pleasure You need not thank me, Boris. Yeah, you welcome Prithvi. Yes, Raju Naik. Hi, Raju. You can just drop a mail at proud to be dentist at gmail dot com. We'll send you the group link. Okay. And also this weekend, as you're all online, see, I have one important announcement. so we'll definitely we have we're planning one surprise to all of you and i'll let you know this weekend right so tomorrow or sunday i'll let you know so we have crossed 8000 subscribers and please don't congratulate me now once again so i uh, say so it's not my intention to receive that message from you so since we have some important landmarks in this week like we crossed 8000 subscribers and also it's been 8 months or 9 months since we started this project and the journey has been amazing as i keep on saying it's been exciting amazing and i've seen a new version of myself in this entire process and also we have a lot many positive things happening like in the sense uh, like uh, the best thing i can tell you is i started getting up at 5 o'clock so that's the best thing that, that was unimaginable for me personally so all this has happened with with our combined effort right with the support we have here with the kind of system which we developed in this entire process and i i can guarantee you that this uh, this bonding or relation will not just last till need 2017 so it's, it it will be there forever uh, as long as i stay as long as we all like we will definitely have this bonding forever and so keeping all these things and instances in mind so we're planning a small surprise this weekend and i'll let you know right so we're just seeing like how to implement that and how to uh, provide more benefit to all of you so we'll definitely let you know this weekend right so tomorrow day after tomorrow i'll announce that small surprise to all who are attending our live sessions okay right glad to hear that shruti yes thanks regina for welcoming me to the group <laughs> yes raju naik so you love the concept of music right from next time we'll definitely have we'll start with music right and okay uh, we'll end with music uh, i don't think so we'll start with music and we, in the meantime we'll also have a break for 2 to 5 minutes in each live session and we'll have some music right okay <laughs> i'll let you know the surprise let let that remain as a surprise right okay we'll break and i have to enjoy some music so this whole week it's been anastomosis with 
Well, by the way, where is Nidhi? So we are missing Nidhi this time. Also Abhishek. I think Ramesh is lying online, right? So Abhishek, Nidhi. Okay, we had this extensive anastomosis uh, in regard to live sessions with anatomy this week. So I need to have a good break tonight. So again, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, more, tomorrow evening again, we'll have a live session maybe at 9 p.m., right? So I'll be out of station and we'll try to have a live session by at least 9 p.m. tomorrow, Indian Standard Time, right? We'll have a beautiful, uh, beautiful session. Definitely, we're going to discuss about one inspiring personality and also we'll have some general discussion, right? So it's a never ending process. I keep on talking, so I'll stop it here. And okay. Bye. Good night. Shubhratri, Shubhakher, Shabakher, or whatever it is, right? You have that mnemonic. What do you call that mnemonic? To Jada Matkar or something for facial now? Yeah, to Bakwas Bankar or something? Yeah, to Jada Bakwas Bankar. I'm not getting that. Yes, Rishi, good night. To Bakwas Jada Matkar. Ah, okay. <laughs> right, thanks. To Jada Bakwas Matkar. So that's the problem we have when you don't understand the phrase. Right, so once you understand the phrase, it will be easy for you to pronounce it, right? Isn't it? The subject is also the same. Okay. To Jada Bakwas Matkar. <laughs> right, bye. See you tomorrow again.